Well, good afternoon and welcome to the Idahoan Show. Uh, when I spoke a little while ago about the issue of church and state and the individual, um, I approached it from a fairly theoretical perspective. I presented a number of principles that I thought might be useful in thinking about the issue. Uh, but usually when I've gotten questions about that subject, they're phrased in a much more practical, application-oriented manner. Um, you know, questions like, is it appropriate for a Christian to be involved in politics, or to be in the military, or to be in law enforcement, or to be in positions of political authority? You know, is it appropriate for a Christian to seek political office? Uh, is it appropriate for a Christian to fight in a revolution? Uh, you know, questions along those lines. And in principle, I think the answer to any of those questions for a given individual is going to be, well, it depends. But there's a couple of things that I thought I would share as a quick follow-up to my previous video that I think provide a little bit of perspective that helps make those questions easier to answer. On the one hand, uh, as we discussed last time, in a New Testament context, there is, or should be, a distinct separation of powers between church and state. Uh, and the church, as Christ's spiritual kingdom upon the earth, uh, transcends state boundaries. So this implies that there are cases where it may not be appropriate for Christians in certain capacities or callings to get too involved in affairs of state that might become a hindrance to their role within the church or might just serve to blur the distinction between the church and state in ways that wouldn't be appropriate. For example, you know, maybe you've got a missionary who is trying to take the gospel to a bunch of different unreached people groups in different regions that each have their own specific political polarizations. And so if he tries to take a hard stance on every single little political issue in each of these different regions, at best that's going to be somewhat distracting, uh, you know, potentially you know, compromising the clarity of the spiritual message that he's trying to present. And you know, worse yet, the political polarizations could lead some people to disregard his message based on their political stance without even listening to the spiritual message that he's really there to present. Uh, so that's one case where it might make sense for him to stay out of politics, at least as far as his public life and ministry is concerned. And then another example would simply be if you had someone in a leadership role within the church, it might not be appropriate for them to also seek an elected office or some other position of authority within the state, within the government, just to avoid uh, blurring the distinction between church and state. But I would submit that these are somewhat specialized cases, and I would observe that positions of authority within government, you know, anything involving law enforcement or, you know, these kinds of issues I've been asked about, these offices all require a great degree of good moral judgment in order to execute them well and justly. And as Christians, you know, we've got the record of Scripture to calibrate our moral compass, we've got the Holy Spirit to guide us, and so we should be the most competent people in the world to make good moral judgments which is a principle that is itself reinforced in the scriptures. You know, there's one place in the epistles where the apostle is sort of reprimanding a specific church for taking matters of internal disagreement before the secular courts when you know, their own people are much more qualified to resolve these types of disputes than the secular courts are. And so when it comes to questions of law enforcement or governmental policy or whether or not to start a revolution, 
It may not be for every individual Christian to be involved in those issues, but I would expect Christians to be at the forefront of all of those issues because they should be the most qualified people to make sound decisions on those issues. So hopefully this provides a little bit of additional useful perspective on the issue, and until next time, thank you for watching The Idahoan Show.